This is I Didn't Know I Could Do That with Office 365, Volume 2, Flow, Approval, Escalation. I'm Scott Shearer. I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer and Office 2016 Specialist Master. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at Scott J. Shearer. Here is our use case. You have a SharePoint list where items for approval are submitted. Once the item is submitted, an approval action is assigned to an approver. If that approver does not take action in a reasonable amount of time that we will specify, we want that approval canceled and a new approval action assigned to a new approver. Before we get started with our flow, let's take a look at the SharePoint list. This is a custom list. We have the title column, a text column for the approver's name, a multi-line text box for the approver comments, and another text column for the approver decision. Let's take a look at our approval escalation flow. Our flow starts when a new item is created in our SharePoint list. Then we will initialize a few variables. I'm using variables to hold the approval decision, the approver name, and finally the approver comments. Now as is the case in many flows when an item is created in the SharePoint list before we start the approval action we get the manager of the individual that created the SharePoint list item and use that in our approval action. So next we start an approval action use the manager of the individual who created the SharePoint list item as the approver and next, we create a scope. A scope is a way of grouping actions and treating actions as a group. So inside of this scope, I set variables to hold the outcome of our approval action. So, for example, I am setting the approver variable to be the approver name. I am setting the approval decision to be the response. And finally, our approver comments variable to the comments from the approval. Now, our goal in this approval flow is to make it so that if an approver does not respond in a timely fashion, that we can cancel that approval, create a new approval action, and assign the new approval action to a different approver. The way we accomplish that is this. We go to our approval action, we go to the ellipses, and then we go to settings. We set a time out. Now, for test purposes, and I do this a lot, I have this set to one minute. PT1M will be one minute. If I wanted this to be one day, I would say P1D. I sometimes have trouble remembering what format this should be in, so if I come over to Duration and click on the I for more information, notice that it says Specify Duration in 8601 format, in ISO 8601 format. So what I'll do is I will just do a quick Bing search of ISO 8601 format, and I find a number of examples quickly uh, of the syntax I need to uh, set the time out. But uh, in a nutshell, PT1M would be one minute, P1D would be one day. The way we have it configured right now, when this approval action starts, it will time out after one minute. Now, if it does time out, I don't want the actions inside of this scope to run. So I'm going to click on the ellipses for the scope and click on configure run after. I only want the actions inside this scope to run if the approval is successful. Now, what if the approval times out and this does not run? The actions inside our scope does not, uh, do not run. I have a second scope where I have a second approval action and I'm setting the same variables we set above. The magic here happens inside the ellipses 
and configure run after. I only want my second scope, where I have this second approval running, to run if the action above it, the scope above it, is skipped. So, if, for example, our approval flow starts, we, st uh, we get the manager, we start our approval, our specified period of time goes by, and this approver does not take action, since this approver, excuse me, since this approval action would not be successful, the scope following it would not run. However, the scope following it, where we have our second approval action, would run because this is skipped. Going below that, after we have an approval decision, either from our first approval or our second approval, I'm going to send an email to the individual that created the SharePoint list item. Normally at this point we might have an if statement. If the approval action is a, uh, results in an approval, do this, if not, do that. To simplify m matters, because I am using the variables, I'm just sending a single email and I'm referencing those variables. So, subject approval decision colon, whatever the approval decision was, I'm referencing the variable, likewise the approver name and so forth. Let's take a look at the run after for this send an email action. And I want this to run whether the action above it or the scope containing our second approval is either skipped or run successfully. In other words, whatever happens, whatever approval runs, be it the first one or the second one, I want this email to run, uh, email to be sent. And it works because I'm referencing the variables. Those same variables are being set in our first scope. Uh, to store the results of the first approval and the second scope storing the results of the second approval and obviously only one of those are, will run. After we send an email I have my update item there's nothing special I need to do there. So let's take a, a quick review. A new item is created in our SharePoint list. We initialize some variables to store the results of our approval. We get the manager of the individual that created the SharePoint list item. We start an approval action, assign it to the individual's manager. We have a scope below our approval, which will store the results of this approval. If this approval times out, because we configured our time out in these settings, if this approval times out, the action below it, where we set our variables will not run. However, the actions below it inside of this scope where we start another approval action and set our variables will run. No matter whether our first approval action runs or our second approval action runs, this email will get sent because we have configured it to run whether or not the scope above it is successful or is skipped. Our final action is to update the SharePoint list item. There is no special configuration required there. If you have questions on the techniques just presented, please comment. If you'd like to see more in the I Didn't Know I Could Do That with Office 365 series, please subscribe.